And I'm here now at the last demo in the in the Juniper booth. I'm with Nick Davey. Nick, will you want to give a quick intro to yourself? Yeah, hi, my name's Nick Davey. I lead the product management team for our Telco Cloud Solutions. And we're going to be talking Telco Cloud and automation, which are two things that really haven't gone hand in hand ever historically, right? So what are you going to be showing us here? Uh, what we're going to be showing you is how we can collapse the layers of networking from the cloud overlay to the data center underlay. And we can automate connectivity coming out of the cloud and connect that to the physical network yeah. underneath it. And the cloud actually has a lot of you know, dare I say, game changer potential for telcos, right? It's something that they really haven't taken advantage of historically. That's right, um, and that's mainly because of the complexity that comes yeah. with cloudifying all of your apps, right? Yeah. And so and big networks too. Yeah, and, and yeah. big networks operating at scale. Yeah. So the tools that we've created allow to automate all of those kind of complex points. So we'll take you through a couple scenarios sure. now. So we're going to start off by showing how we can deploy fabrics in minutes with our intent-based Abstra automation solution. And I want to be clear, Abstra is your intent-based networking engine that's actually the only multi-vendor one in the industry, too. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And um, what we're going to show you is how we abstract away the logical configuration topology of a cloud network from all of the vendor specifics. So what you're seeing here is we're defining the layout, the blueprint, really, of the network we're going to create. We're going to give it all of its assets and attributes. And then once we're ready, once we have this staged, we can roll it out by applying it to a set of devices. Now, this is where the multi-vendor bit comes in, because we have our general design. By selecting the device profile and the interface map, we can say how, what hardware we want to map that configuration onto. Once we have the configuration mapped, we can stage it up. We can see all of the changes we're going to make to our network. We can review them. We'll add a commit message so we know what we did. And then we can apply that to the network. And it's validated before commit. Yeah, that's right. right. Because historically, people would commit things to networks. And then they wouldn't find out it was broken until after they've committed it. Until the scream test, right. right? And then they need to roll it back. And But this avoids all of that. Yeah, yeah. because. With Abstra, what you're seeing is we monitor the actual rollout of the device. You can see you know, that happy green semicircle rollout as all the configuration was applied to the network yeah. and all the services come up. Like essentially what this is doing is it's creating a digital twin right, of the environment yeah. that you can run tests in and yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. creating like a, a virtual multi-vendor, kind of, or I should say a device agnostic yeah. copy of the network. Everything that we do is inherently multi-vendor here because we start off with these abstract topologies and abstract devices. So when we're adding devices and racks, we're not really interested in the configuration. We're interested in you know, the layout, the properties of the network. So you can see this is another copy of that same topology running Arista hardware. We don't really make too many bones about it in the configuration. Um, we can even use Cisco and XOS. Uh, what matters is the topology of the network. Now, when we're rolling out services, um, EVP and VXLAN services are the same regardless of the vendor, right? The whole point is interoperability. So we define the characteristics of the network we want to create. Got it. Yeah. Once we have the subnet, uh, the VNI automatically assigned, we're ready to push this to the network. And we'll see in hyperspeed right now, we're going through and provisioning this. The cool part is we just have to pick out the endpoints we want to connect this to. Abstra is really interested in just the endpoints and the connectivity. So where do we land the service? Well, that's the beauty of the fabric, right? It's sort of independent of the underlying infrastructure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And when we, here, I'll just pause my hyperspeed here. If we actually look at the config, what Abstra's done is it's rendered the configuration into the device-specific config uh, before it applies it to the network. And we can review that as well. One of the beauties of Abstra is it's built by network engineers. And so it doesn't do anything to abstract important details like configuration, like configuration drift. You can actually see what's going on. But you don't need to bother yourself with those details. You can just apply the config. Got it. So we'll see we'll review that config. We can go in and again, give ourselves a happy commit message, and then we can commit that to the network. And it's all configured. Yeah, and that's it. Again, now in our virtual data center, yeah. we have connectivity. But just in the interest of time, I want to skip ahead and show you how we can interconnect something like a, a Kubernetes service to this fabric we just built. So we're going to show you how we can add connectivity for an SRIOV virtual function or a VLAN that needs to go to a, a Kubernetes pod via Appstra. 
This all happens because we've created awareness between the SDN layer in Kubernetes and the data center fabric orchestration. In order to do that, we tell the, the SDN solution the location of the Appster fabric, and we give it some information around the, the blueprint it should consume, as well as the tag or the label that we should apply to services that we want connectivity for. Once we've created that, we have the ability to um, map virtual networks inside of Kubernetes to the fabric itself. Now, this is important because uh, previously, these two networks were kind of ships in the night. So whatever you create inside of Kubernetes, the fabric doesn't know about it. Connecting it is hard. And so now what we've done is we have visibility inside of the actual uh, uh, Kubernetes networks for the underlay. Uh, and here's the, the mandatory pile of YAML. So you yeah. can see it is indeed Kubernetes. Yeah. Once that network's available, we can actually consume it by creating a pod. Okay. Now, the neat thing here, like although we've created our pod so we can see we've got connectivity inside of our Kubernetes container, um, just having connectivity isn't enough. Yeah. We need to show that we've got uh, a healthy connection as well to the fabric. So we can actually verify the state of that configuration. So we can see in the network, not only do we have our network provision, but we see that in Appstra, it's been provisioned as well. So you have that closed loop provisioning. Yeah. yeah, and that's the strength of Appstra, is that the closed loop is what lets it be intent-based. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. not about what you've configured, it's about what you've got running. Right, yeah. And now by creating this linkage between CN2 in Kubernetes and the data center fabric managed by Abstra, you have that connectivity that goes from the top of the telco cloud all the way out to the fabric. OK, got it. So. Uh, and that's really that. I mean, Kubernetes availability and visibility inside of Abstra, fabric provisioning inside of Kubernetes, um, it gives you that whole service from tip to tail uh, and that automated telco cloud experience. Yeah, well, telco cloud's been something that's been promised for a long time. and. You can argue that without the automation piece, it's you know really not all that beneficial. So the expertise yeah. needs to live somewhere. Yeah. it either needs to live in operations teams that are running this and through an, um, like uh, intricate engineering, or it can live in high-level tools that are built to solve these yeah. problems. And that seems like a much more cost-effective way to do it. So. And this is how we're going to scale it out. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Nick. I appreciate it. That was good. Cool. Thank you thanks. very much. Thanks. thanks.